Our faith in action. Today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul is in Albuquerque, New Mexico, as Vincentians serve rural communities affected by COVID-19. Then we're in the Tampa Bay area to learn about the changes the society has made to keep Vincentians and our neighbors in need safe. And we'll take you to Houston as we show you how Vincentians transform their operations while remaining a trusted resource in the community. These stories are just some examples of the good works of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul across the United States. In action, today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul. COVID-19 has challenged all of us at every turn, and the Society of St. Vincent de Paul has never been needed more than during this global pandemic. From masking up to social distancing, we may have changed how we go about serving our brothers and sisters in need. What's not changed is the Society's unique person-to-person -person approach, the essence of this global spiritual ministry. Welcome to Our Faith in Action, today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul. I'm Trace Trolco. We're in Albuquerque, New Mexico, just outside Sacred Heart Catholic Church, noteworthy for its unique bell tower. The bell itself is more than 100 years old, and two 20-foot beams pulled from the rubble of the World Trade Center destruction on September 11, 2001, are a part of the bell tower, serving as a quiet reminder of that dark day in American history. The beams also remind us that out of dust and ashes, we experience a sense of rebirth in determination and faith. A fitting symbol for the society. This isn't the first pandemic that's challenged Vincentians around the world. Ralph Middlecamp, president of the National Council of the Society in the United States, reminds us that Vincentians can't be stopped from helping our neighbors in need. If someone were looking to make a plan to harm the work of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul, they might do something like limit our ability to meet with the people we serve, or find ways that our members couldn't come out of their homes to meet with each other and make a plan to serve. They might ask us to close our buildings where our food pantries and our stores were, or even to say we could no longer meet in our churches for our spiritual need. Well, all those things did happen during this last pandemic, but our members responded creatively. They learned how to use video conferencing. They opened their food pantries to drive up operations, and they engaged the rest of the community to help them. So going forward, we'll continue to help the people because they often needed our help before, and they need it even more now. And there's a whole new group of people that are now also needing our help. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul is here to help our neighbors in need. The pandemic has known no boundaries, and as Michelle Wargo shows us, has been especially challenging in rural communities. It's another busy Tuesday for Vincentians at Holy Family Catholic Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico, as they get ready to distribute food to neighbors in need. Pandemic precautions in full effect. Gloves, masks, everybody has to wear a mask in the building. Uh, they have to have gloves on. Uh, I don't know if you see, we're, we clean the carts uh, as they come back as best we can. Um, yeah, a lot of differences, but it's kept us open, you, you know, and that, that's been a real blessing. Holy Family Vincentians serve hundreds of families through twice a week food events like this one. Vincentian Therese Nunez says they meet with many senior citizens and people impacted by COVID-19. They need it, especially because a lot of the households have increased. Uh, most of the people that have lost their jobs have had to move in with mom and dad, along with their children. We've seen that impact of family increases, enlarged immensely. and seven, 10 people living in one household. Father Patrick Schaefer, pastor at Holy Family Catholic Church, sees the need for the society's services in his community. Well, this part of Albuquerque, the South Valley, is, is of course very poor. So the need is great, okay? Uh, and especially with the pandemic, that need even became greater. 
Those being helped, like Eli Salas, maintain a safe distance from one another as they pick up items needed by the family. And uh, eggs and, and uh, meat and, and drink and, and then fish and shrimp. And a, lot of, a lot of food, they give a lot of food to all the people. Just that, yeah, um, just being able to um, give back to the community for probably all the blessings I've been given in life. The Vicentians that are here in our uh, Archdiocese Council of Santa Fe are exceptional people. I have met angels. I can't, I don't know where to begin, but call them angels. They are the most wonderful, caring people. They care about this community. They care about the people that they serve and they do it with their whole hearts. It's an opportunity to live our faith. It reflects in our charitable uh, works the way we treat each other, the way we relate to each other. So it's an opportunity to go beyond the, the inside of the, of the actual church building and live the faith. Vincentian Cecilia Ordaz with the conference at St. Martin de Porres Catholic Church says the pandemic has changed the way she and her fellow Vincentians go about a home visit. Everything is done over the phone. We're not meeting because of COVID. Um, and basically uh, not having that, you know, contact with them is, is different and it's so impersonal. But do, there are times that uh, they do get personal because they start crying and they start, you know, telling you everything. So you have to be patient with them. But um, it's just that doing it over the phone. Uh, I like doing it, but I would rather be face to face. During a traditional home visit, Vincentians, in pairs, meet with individuals and families in need at their homes, making for a more relaxed environment. Whether over the phone or face-to-face, -face, Cecilia says the person-to-person -person contact helps her grow in her spirituality. It's just an overall good feeling that you get to able to help somebody and sometimes too spiritually because they, they need prayers and we sometimes pray with them over the phone. I don't know, it's just something that you just want to keep doing, you know, keep helping somebody. COVID-19 forced Vincentians at this St. Vincent de Paul thrift store and food pantry in rural Los Lunas to make changes. The glass, uh, the plexiglass at the desk, uh, the spacing uh, as people come in. Uh, we decided not to close for food at the time. Um, I think we closed for maybe a, a week or two. And uh, because the community really depends on us here for food. The society's positive reputation attracted Gloria Ledger to the store, first as a customer, now as a volunteer too. Importance to me is that they give their food, they help the, the needy a lot. The, the, if they come in, a, a homeless person, they help them. They dress them, they give them a warm jacket. For Vincentian David Gallegos, with the Conference of San Clemente Catholic Church, the calling to be part of the society is a blessing. You see people who are really in need and it, and it makes you appreciate, you know, the things that you do have. And to be able to help them, it makes you feel good. Vincentians across the United States have adapted to a global pandemic as the society becomes an even more important resource in communities large and small. For Our Faith in Action, Today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul, I'm Michelle Wargo. Thanks, Michelle. Vincentians in Los Lunas even distribute firewood to those in need. Leveraging technology to stay connected, that's next. But first, feeding the hungry. It's what Vincentians do, and COVID hasn't stopped that. The story when our faith in action, today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul, returns. Vincentians grow closer to God through working face to face with the poor. The Society of St. Vincent de Paul offers the chance to live your faith, grow spiritually, and develop Christian friendships while serving those in need. Through person to person service, food pantries, mentoring, advocacy, and more, the Society helps people move out of poverty to self sufficiency. You can learn more at www.svdpusa.org. 
These wood carvings at the parish of San Martin de Porras are a must-see while in Albuquerque. The eye-catching pieces are the work of the late artist Juan Sandoval, whose work has been displayed at the renowned Smithsonian Institution. In its wake, COVID-19 has changed lives forever while impacting the way Vincentians serve their neighbors in need. Veronica Alfonso, a young mother of six children ranging in age from 18 months to 18 years old, reached out to the Society of St. Vincent de Paul in Tampa when her world turned upside down because of COVID-19. She said that her husband was the one that worked and um, when they got sick, she, he went to the hospital and he never came out. Vincentian Patricia Cianfraca and other Vincentians have supported this young widow as she grieves the loss of her husband, Pedro. I mean, it's devastating for her and her kids. She's now living with her sister and um, I'm sure that also helps her, you know, with the grieving process. Veronica is grateful for the society's help keeping food on the table and the lights on as well as bringing some joy during the holidays. She says that she's very uh, thankful to St. Vincent de Paul because of all the help that, that we have given her and especially how we made her Christmas um, a lot more pleasant with the gifts that we provided for them. Patricia says the society's phones keep ringing from people impacted by COVID-19. It's either they have suffered the virus, someone in their family, or that they have uh, lost their jobs or uh, just going through economic struggles. <laughs> it's anything but service as usual at the society's community kitchen and resource center in Clearwater. In our preparation, normally we would have before the pandemic, we'd have eight people here, seven, eight people serving online. Now we put everything into go boxes. Vincentian Patrick Ahern says the society has made changes to its dining hall operations, but has never missed a beat in serving meals to the hungry and homeless. This is never closed. We serve every day, Christmas, New Year's, you know, so we've never closed. The people who rely upon the society for a warm meal appreciate the dedication. St. Vincent Paul will always be here because of the kind needy of people that will assist the homeless and the needy. St. Vincent cares. And uh, I'm just glad to see that, that um, you know, that the, the place is still around, that it hasn't, that it hasn't closed down and the Everything hasn't affected them being able to continue to help the homeless around here. It used to be we had tables, a normal separation. Now they're separated quite a bit. Early in the pandemic, we only had takeout. Now that things have eased a little bit, we have social distancing in the dining room. And it's about a 50-50 takeout versus dining room. Vincentian Jerry Garand, who's served the society for nearly 35 years, says Vincentians are doing their best to meet the needs in their community as the pandemic has kept a lot of volunteers safe at home. So of course we lost almost all of our volunteers. We used to have 200 people a week volunteering. Maybe we're down to 20 to 30 volunteering. In 1845, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul was established in the United States. Through the years, Vincentians have served their brothers and sisters in need during wars, depressions, natural disasters, and as we've seen with COVID-19, through pandemics. God always blesses the poor, and he'll always send people to help the poor, and the society, because we help Christ and the poor, we will survive and we'll more, even this pandemic and even more after this. Father John McAvoy, spiritual advisor for the society in the Tampa Bay area, says the society is a blessing in times of distress. The volunteer, he's following Christ, he's praying, he sees the needs of the poor, and he's able to thank God for all the gifts that he has. And the poor who come to us see that we're ready to help them, they're not afraid to come. Good morning, how's everybody doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good. I'm Tiffany, I'm gonna be a stars instructor. 
Tiffany Gordon welcomes some of the area's homeless to a class that prepares people with skills needed to get jobs. Instructors at the Society's Community Resource Center adapted to the pandemic, too, from social distancing to offering classes online. Well, teaching live was, um, it was like the way things should be. And then the pandemic hit and we went, um, you know, everything closed down. We closed the building down. I Carl Walker was seriously injured in a workplace fall, recovering in the hospital while COVID-19 numbers spiked across Florida. Out of work, bills piling up, the society has been a lifeline. That was one thing with St. Vincent Paul. It was one of those days, no matter you know, what was going on, how bad it was in the, the pandemic, people were still caring, people were still needing, and they were there for the people. Vincent and Nancy Jones has worked closely with Carl. She says it's not always been easy to navigate through the pandemic. It's been a very challenging year, and it's a year that's taught us a lot. The challenges have been that we wanted to continue to serve to the level that Vincentians over 400 years have served people in need. Carl is back on his feet, has a good job, and his life is looking good again. What I found out is, you know, St. Vincent Paul is a, is a beautiful thing because they do help people. And when they say they're there to help you, they truly are there to help you without a question. Despite the pandemic, Vincentians haven't wavered in striving to see the face of Christ in their neighbors in need. There's just no way to describe what a blessing it is to be called to serve people in need because we're able to help them materially, but also to be with them, to pray with them, and to provide comfort and to let them know that they're not alone in the struggles that they face. And thank you for everything. Thank you. Much like Veronica's family, the society has lost members to COVID-19, too. Dennis Coote served the society for more than 20 years before getting COVID and dying. Vincent and Zach Mariquin spent time in the hospital with COVID. He worked alongside Dennis in the conference at St. Paul Catholic Church and mourns the loss of his friend. Dennis was very loyal in every way. Dennis was so good and he cared for people. His heart was based on helping keep people. The society is blessed that Dennis's wife, Debbie, continues to serve people in need and remains active in her conference. Well, Vincentians everywhere are masked up and ready to help. I'm Paul Warren in Houston, Texas, where the pandemic has forced Vincentians to provide food in a whole new way. It's a drive through experience. That story's ahead on Our Faith in Action, today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul. This thrift store is one of seven in the Archdiocesan Council of Santa Fe, New Mexico, and one of more than 400 St. Vincent de Paul thrift stores nationally, all disrupted in one way or another during the pandemic. To quote St. Vincent de Paul, love is inventive even to infinity. Throughout the pandemic and following a natural disaster, Vincentians in Houston have adapted to meet the needs in their communities. Paul Boren shows us how the society has reinvented itself. Vincentians with the conference at St. Monica Catholic Church in Houston get ready for what's become a weekly event since COVID, moving the food pantry outside. So they drive through, put their trunks up. We have Vincentians stationed at each of the uh, food distribution sites. We have six and uh, they go through the line. The food is put into their trunk and they go out the gates. Tellison Smith lines up early. You know, I try to be the first one in line so I get what I need out of the line. Willie French Jr. of Vincentian for more than 50 years helped set up the food stations. It's different, a lot different. Uh, we don't really do drive through but with the pandemic, we don't come in contact with, with, with uh, people and, you know, everyday activity. The people who had a job who were doing well and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, this pandemic swept them off their feet and, and they're struggling and needing assistance. Father Martin's MA of St. Monica's basically describes Sean A. Wilson's situation. I actually feel like they're family. I really appreciate it. COVID forced Sean A's job to be put on hold, her hours eventually inching back up to part time, but the bills didn't stop. So she needed some help to keep food on the table for her kids. Because 
I, I've never been in a situation like this where I needed, you know, assistance with feeding my children or my family or paying an electric bill. And it's still, oh my goodness, is it a struggle? Because the same bills, you know, car insurance, things that just, you know, we paid without thinking is now like, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm not even working. I'm not driving as much. Help us, Lord, be, to be the love, the living uh, example of love poured out to all. In Christ Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Vincentians come together in prayer before the vehicles roll through. The society's friends in need are grateful. They treat me real nice. They treat me with respect and, and everything. They treat me real good. Just being able to come here now and go home with, diff with different things that my kids could use right now and could help us and help me supplement cost. You know, it, it's a blessing. The blessing comes back even more to Vincentians. We try to live according to what the scriptures say do. And this is why, you know, we get a, a feeling of uh, 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 satisfaction knowing that we're doing something that people really need. Everything we do, we start with prayer. Our meetings, we start with prayer. Our home visits, we start with prayer. Our food distributions, we start with prayer. So to me, that has been the greatest opportunity and benefit to me. And I think in so doing, I then demonstrate to our friends who are here that we, you see in us the face of Christ and we see that in them. Prior to the pandemic, the society had a limited presence in some communities of Houston. But thanks to grants and the generosity of an anonymous donor, Vincentians have developed relationships and helped many families in need. We call this the Good Shepherd Grant. And we had the privilege of receiving a million dollars grant money from Harris County and the Greater Houston Foundation community. And we executed on that grant and we shared that story with a donor who wanted to remain anonymous and they gave us $500,000 and they wanted us to replicate what we had done with that earlier grant. Outreach to parishes like Queen of Peace Catholic Church connected the society to parishioner Ana Ornelas and her family, knocked down by COVID. I remember one night that I was, I felt like I was dying because I couldn't breathe or nothing and I just asked him. I asked him to please help us. And if I had to die, you know, just help my kids and help my, my husband get through this. Getting sick was just the first of the family's challenges. Well, I got sick from COVID and then I um, infected my, my whole family, my three boys and my husband. So we were all sick at home. Um, you know, he, he couldn't work, I couldn't work. So um, we, didn't, we didn't have a way to, to buy nothing or pay for the rent for that month or nothing. The society helped bring financial stability to Anna's family, a relief to Queen of Peace pastoral assistant, Luisa Baeza. We hear so many stories of how people lost their jobs because of COVID. Um, people got sick because of COVID. And then the winter storm comes along and it's just another hit. You know, people aren't able to work, their pipes burst, they don't have the money to cover the costs. So it's, it's been a traumatic experience for a lot of our parishioners here. Amidst COVID, a disastrous winter storm affected millions of Texans. Father David Bergeron, Queen of Peace's pastor, is grateful for the parish's partnership with the society. They are very thankful to us for the work that uh, we have done, but I feel that uh, it is more them who have the contacts and just a spirituality of generosity. Uh, and so they are uh, motivating us uh, and I think uh, generosity can be contagious and so from receiving help uh, from the COVID and now into the freeze um, so I feel that uh, we are the frozen chosen. Elvira H. Munoz, a Vincentian for more than 50 years, says a lot of people she meets are like Maria Isabel Alba Martinez. All of the parishioners here had, that we've helped had very difficult situations. 
uh, a lot of them lost their jobs, and she had been one of them that had lost her job. Me enfermé con esto de la pandemia. I became sick uh, from COVID when the pandemic started. I, I probably went without work about three months. St. Vincent de Paul was there for Maria with financial and emotional support. Acogida. Me siento. I felt the love. I felt the tenderness. I felt that they really cared for me. I love them. You know, they, they help me when we most need it. They treat people with such respect, with, uh, with such love. The greatest gift is to us. Surprisingly, um, or maybe not surprisingly, most of us join the society to give service to others. And what happens is you end up getting the most benefit out of it, yes. You hope to see Christ in, in those you see and hopefully they see Christ in you and your behavior and your actions. Thanks to an angel who wishes to remain anonymous, those actions helped 370 families who might have otherwise not been reached by Vincentians. For our Faith in Action, today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul, I'm Paul Boron. Thanks to the additional funds, the Society in Houston has developed relationships with more than a dozen parishes. Leadership hopes this leads to the formation of new conferences. It's kind of been a slow Friendship build. is an essential element of the society and COVID-19 hasn't stopped the bond Vincentians have with one another, even when the way they meet has changed for a while. The society has leveraged technology, like the Zoom platform, for meetings, conferences and spiritual gatherings. Vincentian Patricia Cianfraca with a conference at Christ the King Catholic Church in Tampa says the internet has helped keep members connected. We start each meeting with a family prayer for the coronavirus and we end all our meetings with the beautiful prayer of um, Pope Francis Corona prayer. So we, we do that in every meeting. Um, so we've been able to, to meet and discuss through Zoom. The community responded positively to seeing members of the society continue to work with their neighbors. Many who once gave funds through Sunday collections or the poor box have converted to giving online to assist with the society's emergency relief services. No matter the adversity, Vincentians remain on fire through their spirituality and their service. Here again, Ralph Middlecamp, president of the National Council of the Society in the United States. I'm very proud of our members of the Society of St. Vincent de Paul because during this pandemic they continue to serve and to innovate, finding new members, finding collaborators and funders to meet the need. We've been a society in the United States for over 175 years and every generation needs to meet the challenges. We've had wars, pandemics before, we've had depressions before. So we've come through this one, but we need to continue to find new members. So maybe you'll join us. Maybe you'll continue supporting us in your community. And please do pray for us as we help our neighbors in need. Thanks, Ralph. And thank you for all of your prayers and support for our Vincentians and our brothers and sisters in need. For our Faith in Action, today's Society of St. Vincent de Paul, I'm Trace Trolka.